Hi, church family. Have you ever thought to yourself, this is impossible? Perhaps for you, it's an area of personal holiness. God has lovingly pointed out an area of your life where he would like you to change. And perhaps you've tried to change before and you failed. You tried again and you failed. And now when the Spirit points out this area in your life, you almost want to shrug your shoulders and say, I'm never going to change. It's impossible. Or maybe for you, it's a damaged relationship. Things were said, things were done, and now this relationship, which is supposed to be a wonderful picture of grace and beauty, has fallen apart. And when you think about that friendship and what God wants you to do to heal it, well, you just want to roll your eyes and say, it's impossible. It's never going to get better. It could be any area of our lives where the Word of God tells us what to do, where God points out where He wants us to go, where you and I, because of our nature and our history, our lack of faith perhaps, we just want to shrug our shoulders and say, "Ah, that would be nice, but the reality is it's impossible. If that's you, and it certainly is me, There's a book in the Bible written to people just in that situation. We call it the book of Deuteronomy. And for many believers down through the ages, it has been our favorite book in the Old Testament. It is quoted in 17 books in the New Testament. When Jesus was first tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he quoted the book of Deuteronomy. And when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus quoted from, you guessed it, the book of Deuteronomy. I highly recommend it to you. Before we go into the text, let me just paint the the picture a little bit of what's going on in the people's lives. Moses has been their leader for the past 40 years. They were enslaved in Egypt. Israel was in Egypt for 400 years. They had been slaves when God raised up Moses and sent Moses to them to bring them out. And you know the story, the ten plagues, the crossing of the Red Sea, the drowning of Pharaoh's army. And then for the next 40 years, they literally wandered around the desert. And now they are parked on the just outside the promised land. They are going to go in, but Moses will not be going in with them. He knows he will not pass over into the promised land. And Joshua is a good leader. He's been tested. He's been tried. But he's no Moses. And these people are going to go in and fight battles. And then once they fight battles, if they win, they have to farm. Well, these Israelites have not been warriors. They haven't raised an army. And they don't know anything about farming. They were brickmakers enslaved in Egypt. And they certainly weren't an army. And now Moses has them set outside the promised land. And they are going to go in and fight. And they are going to go in and farm. And if they're like us, and they certainly are, they had to be thinking to themselves, this is impossible. My friends, these folks are just like you and me. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 and 3, God has Moses set out how to encourage him. In fact, at the end of chapter 3, he will say, encourage Joshua with these words. Moses, through God, or God through Moses, gives them two reasons to be encouraged and to be strong. Reason number one, God has already done the impossible. For you and me, God has already done the impossible. In their day, in Moses' day, he had done the impossible for getting them out of slavery. The ten plagues, the drowning of Pharaoh's arm, the crossing on the dry ground of the Red Sea, those were all impossible. And they were a great display of God's power. But the Bible is clear. The greatest display of God's power is not getting the children of Israel out of Egypt. It's not even creation. According to the New Testament, the greatest display of God's power is Jesus' resurrection from the dead. A human body was dead for three days. It didn't decay. And then after three days, God raised it back to life. 
God has come into our lives, married us, or put us with Jesus Christ, so we are bound with him, so that his death is our death. His resurrection is accounted as ours. God has already done the impossible. For these people, he did the impossible, getting them out of Egypt and getting them to the promised land. For you and me, he's done the impossible, given us new life in Jesus Christ. He's already changed us. Moses will tell the people here, verse 1 of chapter 2, Then we turned back and set out toward the wilderness along the route of the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country. Then the Lord said to me, Moses will then begin to give some of the battles that they'd already won. These are not major, major victories. But they certainly were victories. My friends, if you were a follower of Jesus Christ, he has already done the impossible. He is already changing you. And I know, sometimes as a believer, we can't see the change God has made in our lives. We're like parents who are so close to the children, they can't see the the growth. But we've all seen our nieces and nephews and our, our friends. We haven't seen them for a while. And we see them and their children have grown. And we, who are not so close, say, oh, you've grown so much. My friend, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, he has already changed you. Sometimes that changes in big ways and other times it's in small ways. But he's already done it. And that was impossible. But God has already started it. He's already done it. He's already done what is impossible. Moses would go on and talk about how God has given them manna in the wilderness. How he had given them spiritual victories already. My friends, the lesson for you and me is this. Never discount those changes in God, uh, changes in your life that God has put there. It's not an accident. It's not just you maturing as a person. No, it is the supernatural work of God in your life to change you into the image of Jesus Christ. And if you are a follower of his, he's already begun it. Jesus has already done the impossible. So when you and I think something is impossible, remind yourself, hold on a minute here. God has already done the impossible, and he's done it in my life. There's a second reason to trust God here. And that is this, Moses will continually say in this chapter, Then the Lord said to me, verse 9, Then the Lord said to me, verse 16, Then the Lord said to me, My friends, Moses does not have the children of Israel here because Moses got them there. No, Moses has them there because God has them there. God enjoys or is glorified by putting his people in impossible situations where they have to obey him. God is glorified in your life. When you obey him, even when it is difficult, even when you think, Joe, there is no hope of the situation changing, my friends, follow the Lord. He has already done the impossible, and he will be glorified doing the impossible again in your life as you seek to obey him. Go with God.